Hey everybody, Melanie Atkinson here, Realtor with Smith & Associates, and I'm here on location today at one of my beautiful listings to talk to all of you out there that might be interested in international buying. So thanks everybody for watching. I am here with Annette Reeve, who is one of the directors of our Smith & Associates London office. And I'm so excited to have this conversation. I've wanted to do this for a very long time. And all of what's going on right now has really given us a good opportunity to have this Skype conversation. So how are you today, Annette? We're good, yeah. Um, interesting times over here in London, but yeah, we're good. Sunshine, uh, yes. not quite as beautifully as it is there. I know. So I will explain why I'm doing this uh, on location. Um, this is a really special listing, especially for um, people that would be international buyers. This this house is actually French country inspired. So I really wanted to highlight how beautiful uh, this part of Florida is because we'll, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I get a lot of questions on the YouTube channel, Annette, from people that are looking to purchase homes in Florida specifically, because that's where I am. Um, and it's just not really a, a subject that I know a lot about. So I wanted to get your input today, um, specifically for people just starting um, the buying process that are in another country. What would be your, your advice to those buyers that are just starting out? I always say to anybody who's coming to look in any country, but let's focus on, on, Flor on the USA and Florida. The buying process here in the UK is totally, totally different to the buying process in Florida. So wherever they start their search, they need help and education. So, for example, here in the UK, we have no MLS. Agents can only list and sell their own listings. So a buyer has to go from agent to agent to agent to agent to see what's on the market. So that is really, really, really confusing for overseas buyers, particularly the Brits. And they don't understand that when they go to the USA, the agent that they contact can show them the whole marketplace. If you get a British buyer, particularly, or any buyer, but certainly a British buyer, you really do need to educate them on how different the process is. So that's okay. huge. Yeah, so we talked about that last time you were here in Tampa, and I was I was surprised to hear that. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that for anyone watching. As an agent here in Tampa, if someone calls me and they want to see you know 20 properties all listed by different agents, I can show them that and represent them as a buyer. They don't have to go directly to the agent that has the house listed. So it's a lot easier to see a bunch of properties than it is to contact 20 different agents. It's so much better a system. The problem we've got here in the UK is that our commission rates are incredibly low. They're hovering around 1%. Okay. So with commission rates so low, an MLS has never succeeded in the UK because there's nothing to split. Right, right. That's true. Yeah, it's definitely a different different commission structure here in the U.S. And one of the things I'm not sure if international buyers know is that when you're being represented by an agent as a buyer, most of the time the real estate commissions are paid for by the seller. So it's not like you're coming here, getting the representation, and then having to pay for it. Now, obviously, that depends on state, and it depends on um, your buyer's agreement if you happen to have something different with your agent. So check, you know, obviously check that out. But for the most part in the state of Florida, the commission for your representation as the buyer is paid for by the seller. And that can be very confusing for a Brit because <laughs> a Brit, not, here in the UK, if you're selling a property, the agent acts for the seller of the property because that's the person that's paying the commission. That's your client. So although you might help the buyer and be nice to them and help the deal go through, essentially your client is the seller. So buyers here are naturally a bit distrustful of the selling agent. So trying to get them to understand that a buying agent is on their side when they're not paying them is a very <laughs> tricky mindset. And I get British I can see that. And they'll say to me, oh, well, you know, how do I know the agent's going to show me everything that's on the market? Like you say, they're only going to show me the properties where they make the most money. So I have to explain that that's not how it works and that you're not going to show 23 because you're going to get more money than if you sold, showed them 27, whatever. It's right. very tricky. So I have a lot of American agents who get really upset because they say, oh, I showed this buyer three properties and then 
they came back in six weeks time and they viewed a property that was listed with me but they viewed it through another agent and why are they doing this to me and I just have to explain that they're doing it because they're coming with a British mindset. Gotcha. Yes, that's very helpful for us to know as agents that that's what they're used to. So we're not worried as to why they're going to a bunch of different agents. But for for all of you out there watching this, um, our job as a buyer's agent is to represent the buyer. So it is your interest that we're looking out for. When you go directly to the selling agent, just like in Britain, they're representing the seller, but we also have to represent the buyer. We have to be a transactional broker if someone comes directly to us as the seller's agent. And we try to represent both sides fairly. But I, I mean, in my opinion, it's always better to have your own representation as opposed to relying on the one that the seller's using as well, especially since you're not paying for it. I think in, I would agree with that. I do explain to people all the time that, in my opinion, the, the U.S. system is a far better system than the U.K. But unfortunately, sellers in the U.K. are fixated on how low they can get the commission down to. Gotcha. Okay. Um, uh, if so you say, why did you pick such and such agent? Oh, because I got them down to three quarters of a percent. Aren't I fantastic? And you think, <laughs> yeah, but they're going to get you 20 grand less for your house. So <laughs> right, right. Um, as I always say to sellers, when did you get them down to that figure easily? Oh, yeah, really easily. I say, so they'll give away your money just as easily, won't they, when there's an offer coming? <laughs> exactly. Yes. We have the same conversation with sellers here as well. I know it's it's a strange time, obviously, for, for the global economy. Um, so we'll try to speak past this time or prior to this time. Have you seen any trends uh, with uh, British buyers, European buyers in general, and, and where they're wanting to spend their money in the U.S., real estate-wise? It is a fact that... 90% of British buyers buying in the USA buy in Florida. Well, here we go. Look at This them, is why. 90% <laughs> of them buy in Orlando. Okay. Well, we need 90%, to work on that. Yeah. And 90% of them are buying under half a million dollars. Okay. So I always say that buyers don't get a map, stick a pin randomly in it and go, oh, Oh my goodness, Clearwater looks nice. I've never been, I've never heard of it, but it sounds nice. Right. So buying, whether it's buying in France or Florida or Italy or the UK for a vacation home, buying tends to follow vacation. So where you've got people, British people buying in, in Tampa Bay, almost certainly it'll be because they went on vacation. And I often joke that they go to Orlando because the kids all want to go to Disney and they've looked at all the adverts for Disney, which all show a lovely beach. And after two days of Disney, the kids say they want to go to the beach. So they go down to the hotel reception and say, which way to the beach? And they go, well, it's X amount this way or and you might go to Vero or it's this amount this way and you, you might go to Tampa. So you're going to be getting people who have made that move had a vacation, gone to Tampa Bay, Clearwater, St. Pete's, wherever, Sarasota, you know, that same thing applies down there. They've been on vacation, they've stayed in the area and they've fallen in love with it. Or a friend's got a holiday home there and they've gone to stay with them. But almost certainly they will have had two or three holidays in the area before they make that decision. They don't Which makes sense. Right, which makes sense. So what I would like for anybody in the UK who's watching this to keep in mind is you don't have to go to Orlando first. And maybe once they've taken one trip over here, they know that. So if you want to start your vacation here and have a nice beach vacation and a city environment uh, to go to sporting events, things like that, then you go to Disney for a couple of days, switch it up and start over here in the Tampa Bay area and go to Disney for a couple days. Orlando itself is is just very tourist-centered, centered, whereas the Tampa Bay area isn't. It is, obviously, it's a big part of our economy, but it's not like Orlando, which, you know, with the theme parks and everything else. So I would really like for, for people to um, take a look at what Tampa has to offer and Pinellas County beaches have to offer and come over here. We have an international airport. We have one of the best international airports. And you haven't got thousands of children running <laughs> yes. around high on Coca-Cola with Minnie Mouse ears on. 
Yeah, I mean, having been raised in Florida, Orlando is not a, a really exciting place for me. I find it very stressful because of all of the energy that comes with the, the amount of families and stuff that are there. But again, it is what people know, and I understand that. Um, but anyone watching, I have a video called Why Tampa that we'll link this video to um, that just talks about the Tampa Bay area in, in general. Um, so branch out and come over here. We have a lot of uh, property over here, and we're getting more and more every day, um, luxury condominiums and things like that. So let's talk about the actual actual buying process. So say I'm a British citizen and I want to buy a, um, an investment property over here. What are the challenges and uh, for, uh, for the people looking to do that? Okay. One of the first things you've got to educate a British buyer about is because our laws here are different to yours, they will automatically assume that they can buy the property use it for two or three times a year themselves and rent it out the rest of the time. So if okay. a property is in a community where you can't do short-term vacation rentals, you need to make sure that they know that okay. because they will automatically assume they can. And I've known deals that have fallen apart because, I don't know, a month into the transaction – They've mentioned to the agent, oh, well, won't it be great? We've done our sums. It'll pay for itself when we let it out. And the agent said, uh oh, no, not in this community. You can't. Right. So in the UK, you can pretty much let anything short term. So that's something you've really got to iron out, because if their figures are done on the property covering its costs, you need to know. Okay. Yeah, that's a really good point. So, cause if they're buying a uh, condo, beach condos, um, even homes, w every condo has different restrictions as far as how long something can be rented, how short and how long the minimums are. So, so yes, if you're, if you're an international buyer, a British buyer, and you're looking for that, make sure you communicate that to your agent so they can look at the right condo complexes or cities where the homes are located. That's a very good point. And the other way around the agent needs to ask from the outset, are Absolutely. you looking to, to let this out? Because the British buyer will assume they automatically can unless told otherwise. And as far as raising finance is concerned, the British are, by nature, a relatively conservative, with a small c, race. So the majority of buyers that you will get will probably be cash buyers because they might have inherited or they've sold a big house and they're buying something smaller. If they are going to raise finance, they're probably going to raise it on the strength of their home here in the UK. The majority of British buyers would be incredibly wary of borrowing money in the US, even if they could borrow it. They would be very, very, very wary of a US mortgage because they don't understand okay. it. So they stick with what they know. Okay. Can they also, get a loan the, in the UK? They wouldn't. There are, are some loans that you can get on an American property. It goes in. It's not been so easy since the 2008 crash. So probably what they would do is either have the cash or try and raise against their UK home. There okay. are loans. And we, we know companies that do do loans for foreign purchases. But I would say most of your people, particularly if they're buying vacation homes, are going to be doing it cash because they've inherited or sold a business or whatever. Right. But the other thing that you have to explain to them very carefully is that your taxes and your property taxes are much higher than here. OK. They are going back to what I said earlier. They are going to turn up. They're going to get off that aeroplane at Tampa Airport or Orlando Airport thinking it's the same as here. We have we pay higher income tax here in the UK and our property taxes are a lot lower. So, for example, I live in North London, not a big house. It's, it's London, but I live in a relatively nice three bedroom, two bathroom house in North London. My property taxes are under three thousand dollars a year. Wow. Yes, that's significantly lower. So they're going to be assuming yours are the same. So okay. you, you, from the absolute outset, before you get any deals agreed, go through the finances with them and make sure they understand exactly what they're going to be laying out. Make sure they understand about HOA fees and all of that sort of stuff. 
because they're a lot higher for you than they are for us. What you don't want to do is two weeks into the transaction, everybody's terribly excited and picking kitchen cabinets. And then the deal falls through because it's so much more money than they ever thought it was going to be. Right, right. Yes. So I can uh, assure any of your buyers that myself and uh, Smith and Associates agents in general would go through all of that information um, on the outset, depending on what they're looking for and how much that would be. And we would estimate it as as well as we possibly could. So they are going into a transaction with their eyes wide open as far as what it will cost them per year. When you're the selling agent, if you haven't got a buying agent on the other side, working with a British buyer who's as good as you, that's where things can fall apart. Absolutely. So get that buyer's agent. I know you can't really advise too much specifics about tax implications in, in the other in your home country and also um, how long they can stay. But where would you recommend people go to find those answers? I always suggest that a buyer, a British buyer buying in Florida, gets themselves a really good international lawyer. There are a number here in the UK, and obviously you've got them over there. But they need a really good international lawyer because it all depends on whether they're going to be coming backwards and forwards on an ESTA, which means they can only stay for 90 days, come home for 90 days, go back for 90 days. Or there are all sorts of visas dependent on their circumstances. So they need a really good tax advisor and a lawyer that can sit them down and say, this is exactly how it works. Okay. Yeah, because those are the questions when I get international buyers asking questions on YouTube, that's usually what they want to know. And obviously, I'm not um, equipped to answer that either. Um, I wouldn't be doing anybody a service by pretending to be an accountant or an attorney. So, um, I had somebody the other day who was asking me over and over and over, why can't you tell me? And I said, because it would be incorrect for me to do so. I'd already recommended somebody. I thought, oh, well, I can get free advice from her and I'll have to pay this other fella. And I said, I cannot possibly advise you. It would be unprofessional of me to do so. Right, right. And and why would you want uh, the non-professional advice anyway if you're making such a big investment in a foreign country? It seems like uh, it's worth the money to uh, ask somebody uh, who really knows what they're talking about. Do you work a lot with other European buyers? Do you see any trends from mainland Europe um, and their purchasing over here? Not um, most of the people we work with would be either British or people living in the UK. Okay. Uh, European countries, again, I think you'll find it will be vacation led. Right. They, you know, the Germans go on holiday, they fall in love with Naples, they seem to love it over there. (laughs) <laughs> and they'll they'll wander into a real estate company in Naples and that's where they'll buy. Right. Um, you tend to find on vacation purchases, a lot of it will will be because they've been coming there on holiday. Right. Um, so do a not do not a lot of British uh, go to Miami? That tends to be our most international city. So Orlando and Miami are the two that that seem to be on everybody's radar. Yeah, uh, I think a lot of Brits regard Miami as an extension of South America. So I would say if they're coming to Florida and they've branched out beyond Orlando, it's the luck of the draw. And I chat when I'm over in America, I chat to a lot of British who own property there and I'll say, oh, my goodness, you know, what made you buy your house in Anna Maria Island? Oh, well, we came on vacation for four years running and we fell in love with it and we came over and we saw this sign outside the house and the next thing was we bought it. So I think it tends to be happenstance often, oftentimes. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. As far as real estate is concerned in the Tampa Bay area, that's where I work. So that's where I'll talk. Um, So for, again, anyone watching this who doesn't know a lot about the Tampa Bay area, we have every type of real estate from luxury condos to beautiful estate homes, um, similar to the one that's in the background here. Um, And, you know, it, depending on what you're looking to use your house for, if you want a beach house or if you just want a a country residence almost here, um, that's probably, I would guess, less expensive. How do you you think the house prices compare? So this house is 8,600 square feet, which I'm not sure what that equals um, for you guys. At my age in London, I'm I'm too old to understand metric. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So this is a really big house. 
it's yeah. listed for two million dollars. Um, what would an estate, uh, a large estate in uh, the countryside of England, run people? Oh, that would be impossible. I mean, you could be if you were in one of the smart gated estates just outside outside London, you could be ten, twelve million. A house like that on the south coast of England, a long way from London, you could be looking at a million. But do okay. remember that land in America and Florida is a lot cheaper than here. You know, right. you don't get that sort of space very easily right. here because we just don't have the land. Yes, it's a very small little island you have there. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, yes, Florida Florida does have a lot of space. Yeah, I think and- forget that sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and when people vacation here, they go to the cities and it looks really congested. But but in general, Florida has tons of space on the interior part of it. There's a couple other things I want people to know about the coast of Florida whenever they're thinking about going to Orlando. Um, one, one of the things that I always tell people is um, in Orlando, they don't get the sea breeze. It's very, very hot in Orlando. The temperatures can be similar from Tampa to Orlando, but we we get breeze here um, that doesn't necessarily happen in the center of the of the state. So keep that in mind too for anybody looking um, to come over here. Anything else you <laughs> you would like to tell your British friends about um, international buying? Should they be nervous about it? You know, you've dealt with so many people that have done it. Does it normally work out for people? What what's your your ultimate feeling about it? I would always say, if, if a British buyer says to me, oh, I'm thinking of buying in. Florida, where shall I buy? I will always say it's impossible for me to to say. Go over, have a couple of holidays, do a holiday on the East Coast, do a holiday on the West Coast, find your feet, don't rush into it. Generally, I think, perhaps it's the nature of the Brits, they tend to be fairly careful. So it won't be a knee-jerk decision. I think the interesting thing is, and I can only speak pre this current um, global situation. We obviously, Brexit finally happened um, on the 31st of January Mm -hmm. this year. And funnily enough, the general election, when the general election happened, we were actually over with you in December. Yes, I remember I was watching. (laughs) Uh, And I think I vowed I wasn't, you know, we were at that party down on Beach Drive and I vowed I wasn't going to look at my phone. And the minute I walked out of the office, it was going ping, 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 (laughs) ping. Prior to what's happening now, we had seen a huge upturn in the real estate industry here in the UK because we'd been in the doldrums for three years because with Brexit, nobody was doing anything. Right. And then there was a huge fear of who was going to get into power. And then the minute the election happened, we had what they lovingly referred to as the Boris bounce. And the property market came back. I think we were 11 percent up year on year just prior to the coronavirus. So it will be interesting to see what happens. But a feel good real estate market is good for everybody, because if people are feeling confident here in the UK, then they're far more likely to be looking to buy overseas because they're feeling confident here. Right. And people are feeling more confident before all of this happened. So we all have to wait and see what shakes out after all of this. I will say, um, you just touching on the current market here in Florida, we we are considered essential workers. So real estate is still moving here in Florida. Um, But obviously, it's a little bit slower because we don't have people coming in town as much as um, they were before. There are some sellers who are waiting for all this to shake out before they list their home. But for the most part, we are still selling uh, real estate very quickly here. It's it's our spring summer months, which are our busiest months um, for anyone looking to relocate for jobs and and everything else. Vacationers and um, international buyers tend to be more in the winter months because that's when they're vacationing on our beaches. Um, So that has already passed. And that was a really busy, it was a really busy year for us, January through March. Um, And yes, I mean, we're waiting too to see kind of what happens with all of this. But, you know, if the real estate market goes down here, you know, we have, we have been on an uptick in prices for many years now here in Florida. So for British buyers that are maybe looking for a little bit better deal, if prices go down here, you know, we should see that start happening in several months from now. People think that it happened instantly, that prices went down instantly, and that has not happened here um, yet. So we'll see. Oh, well, you're always going to have bottom feeders who come in wringing their hands. The end of the world is nigh. And can I make it work for me? When I was talking to somebody here in the UK who 
had a deal agreed, a realtor had a deal agreed, and the buyers come in and reduce their offer by 30% because he's read <laughs> in the paper the house prices are going to fall by 30% when the market reopens. Well, nobody knows. And unfortunately, as I mentioned to you before, we're not, um, we're not deemed essential workers here. Right. So the UK market is absolutely ground to a halt because you can't show, you can't, you can't do viewings, you can't do anything. So we are, somebody's pressed pause on the market and you'll get people that go doom and gloom. But in the UK, there are an awful lot of people who are not self-employed and whose jobs have not been affected and they're building up money and they will want to go and spend that money when they can. Right. Right. It's the same here. Obviously, there's a lot of people affected, but there's a lot of people who are or who have not been affected yet or whose jobs are actually much more needed right now than they were before. So it'll be interesting to see how it all works out. Anything else that you'd like to tell everybody? No, other than the fact that I think it's a beautiful part of Florida and very, very close to Nick and my heart. We love it. Yes. Um, I look at photographs sometimes. I think, oh, my goodness, it was only December. And there we were on St. Pete's Beach. And yeah, I know it was it was not that long ago that you guys were here. You guys need to come back back. soon. Yes, you need to come back. It's about 80 something degrees here. (laughs) Well, you go in the shade and have some glass of water. Well, thank you, Annette, so much for your time today. I hope everybody stays safe there in London. And thank you all for watching. If you are an international or British buyer out there and you have questions, feel free to contact Annette or me here in Florida. I'm happy to help you guys whatever way I can. Thank you again for watching. With love, Melanie.